You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time for the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. Telling you everything you need to know about the Saints, Pelicans, and a whole lot more. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. And we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightened sports talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q. This is podcast 358 on the Sports Coma. That's right, 358 on the Coma. And tonight we're going to be covering the extra today. On this rainy Saturday, we'll be covering the Saints, man, black and gold. Firing it up for the first phase, man, uh, Getting back to the NFC Championship game. Got a lot of young guys. They're going to be down there in the camp, man. That's actually performing. they <clears throat> doing their thing, trying to make the team, trying to show where they belong. But Podcast 358, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us here. Both new and established family. Welcome aboard, y'all. Welcome aboard. We are the Sports Coma, the number one independent Saints podcast in the land. That's right. We said proudly, boldly, because we represent the black and gold nation, baby. Podcast 358 coming at you. Like I said, I'd like to give a round of applause. That's right. Round of applause. Giving that to you, y'all. To all of the new and established family of the Sports Coma podcast and the PRO Media Network, and it's, it's, this is pretty big for us, man. Looking at the Saints start of the rookie minicamp, that's amongst a few things we're going to be talking about on Podcast 358. Uh, we're going to break down the fact that the Saints inked their entire 2019 draft class. When is the last time? We got some real splendid black and gold family out there, man. They could probably break this down better than most. But y'all chime in with me, family. Let me know. Put in the comment section. When is the last time you guys heard the Saints came in and inked everybody? Was it last year? Was it the year before that? My recollection, I don't I don't remember them doing this last year or the year before that. But getting all of these guys, and bear in mind, they didn't have a first-round draft pick. They just had a second-round pick with big Eric McCoy. And then after that, the fourth-round selection with the safety, then the sixth-round selection with the safety, and then two seven-round selections. So I guess it wouldn't have been that hard for them to ink all these guys and get them in the camp. But still in all, that was a big deal to do. We'll get into that story as well today on the coma. Also, I want to talk about uh, the fact that the Saints have this rookie minicamp going on in a major way. We get to see some football. You know, football is kind of officially starting now, the draft. Now we get the draft picks. We get the undrafted guys down here. and We're going to break down the list of undrafted guys uh, that is in the camp that's, tra- that's attending this mini camp. We got a full list. We're going to run down the names today on the Sports Coma. Also, we have interviews from that we're going to play from Cam Jordan, who's very excited about getting in there. And uh, he's a, 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 his thoughts, Cam's thoughts on the upcoming season and what he anticipates from a couple of his teammates. We have Marcus Davenport, who the spotlight is on, by the way. The spotlight is definitely on uh, Marcus Davenport. He had a banged-up season last year. Show flashes of what he really could do. Cam Jordan speaks very highly of him, but he really wants to see what this guy can do in the second year. Cam ain't by himself, man. He ain't the only one. I want to know what the hell he can do, too. And if he can really impress me, is he if he can stay healthy. Because that is the main thing that we need to be concerned about when it comes down to uh, Marcus Davenport is his health. Can Marcus, can, uh, Marcus Davenport remain healthy? That's the key to it. We'll break that down as well uh, and, and play that interview for you, his thoughts on what he's doing. Of course, we're going to play David on Yamada. Uh, he's going to chime in 
uh, and give his thoughts on the upcoming team and, and what's going on. So we have that and more. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Podcast 358 family. The Saints, man, getting it going, man, in a major way. And like I said, I'm very happy, man. Very happy for uh, football to return this capacity. But the Saints turned around. They did something uh, very, I ain't going to say miraculous, but they did a good job, man. They inked all of their draft picks, all of them, all of them under contract now. And you're going to need all these guys going, you know, no hiccups. We know what this is it. We know what this is about. We know what, what, what we got to do here. And then Mickey Mouse Loomis and the rest of the staff, they got in there and they made it official by signing their entire 2019 rookie draft class to their first NFL contracts. Big ups to Mickey Mouse Loomis, and I affectionately say that. But this is what is reported by the NFLSaints.com. It announced that the club had signed their entire 2019 draft class to four-year contracts, which is center Eric McCoy. Defensive backs Chauncey Gardner Johnson and Saquon Hampton, tight end Alize Mack and linebacker Caden Ellis, all ranked the list. Now I heard somebody say five, but officially, what is coming from the NFL, the in all the New Orleans Saints dot com, the home of the Saints online, says that they inked all of them to four year contracts. Okay. Four years. Of course, McCoy was the second round choice, 48th overall out of Texas A&M. The 6'4", 350 pound uh, offensive lineman center out of Lufkin, Texas, played started in 39 games. Uh, he appeared in 37 as a center, two at guard. This guy can do it all, man. He put his mind to it. He can do it. You know, he's excellent. Then, of course, Gardner Johnson, which was the fourth round draft pick, 105th out of all of them. And he was six foot even 208 pounds out of Florida and anticipating him in these, the, the, I mean, listen, Saints run a lot of that three safety stuff. And I'm going to tell you something, Gardner Johnson is perfect for that. Cause basically they call him a safety, but the guy really is just a slot. He, he has the skills to be a really good slot cornerback. He has good speed. Um, he's a D he's pretty decent in coverage. He got a little a learn, but he can cover from sideline to sideline. He got pretty good IQ too. And he just, he, the guy got a nose for the ball. I mean, he has a nose for the ball in 13 games. He started 12. He posted 71 tackles, four interceptions in which two of them, he returned for touchdowns, a couple of pass defense, nine tackles for loss. He had three sacks and that, and that was part of the Gators unit. That was fourth and quarter uh, passing efficiency and second and fourth quarter opponent completion percentage. So this guy was pretty good. He finished his career with 161 tackles, nine of which, 91 of which was solo, seven passes defense, nine interceptions, three touchdowns uh, return, interceptions return for touchdowns and four sacks. Big ups for this Gardner kid. Now, I've, I've seen another report had him listed at 5'11". The Saints say he's six feet, so 5'11", six feet, whatever. But this guy, man, put the film on. The man could play. He is speed, and he, I mean, he'll put his helmet right in there. He got a real nose for the ball. This guy is, 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 is going to be a player for the Saints. And out of, you know, we looked at McCoy. McCoy right now, a lot of people across the hemisphere have McCoy penciled in that starting center. And, you know, that don't shock, shock me, to be honest with you, because why the hell would you move up and draft this guy unless you didn't see him as your starter? You ain't going to move up to get a reserve. So in my, in my estimation, and a lot of people are going to agree with me, I would have to say that this guy is going to be the starting center. And, of course, you look at Eason, Nick Eason. Eason was out of football last year with a neck injury. We don't know what you're getting with Nick Eason. We know he's a decent uh, offensive lineman, but he's out of Harvard, but he's not a Matt Burke. You know what I mean? We don't know exactly what we're going to get out of Eason, but we know exactly who Eric McCoy is, don't we? And I tell you who he is. If you don't know, he your goddamn start set this year. <laughs> but anyway, going into the next one, you got Hampton, caught at the Saints' 2019 draft class. Uh, Saquon Hampton was a sixth round draft pick, uh, 177th overall out of Rutgers. Now he was listed as the first Scarlet Knight player selected by the Black and Gold. Saints never selected uh, any Rutgers players before because I guess most of them ain't worth being drafted. Six foot one, two hundred and nine pounds out of New Jersey. And this guy was a three year starter for Rutgers. He played a total of thirty nine games for twenty seven starts, and he was voted as a team captain in twenty eighteen, 
earned a Homer Hazel Award for Rutgers Most Valuable Player in an All Big Ten Honorable Mention after a breakout season, which he had 65 tackles, three of which for loss, three interceptions, 16 pass defense, one fumble recovery, and he left with a boatload of statistics. So what are you looking at here with this draft class, huh? Think about it. Just think about it, you know. Marinate on that for a second. You got a lot of players here with a lot of experience at the collegiate level. You got 30-something games for Eric McCoy. You got all these games with with Gardner, Johnson, and then you have 39-something games of playing, Twenty of 27 of which Saquon Hampton starts. So these guys play a lot, and they got a lot of experience. Alizé Mack was uh, the next guy picked up in of the first of the two second seventh round draft picks, 231st overall, three year starter now, where he played 35 career games with 23 starts, six foot five, 247 pound guy out of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, he had a breakout season in 2018. He posted 36 catches for 360 yards and three touchdowns. I guess that's not a breakout season. I guess if you kind of I don't know. I have big higher expectations. I guess if your name was uh, Dan Arnold, 36 catches for 360 yards and three touchdowns would be a breakout season. But in his career, he hauled in 68 passes for 716 yards for four touchdowns. I guess, but to be fair to Alizé, he started three of which those, you know, he started, it was a start of three years there. They didn't really utilize the tight end like that, as as you can see for his statistics. Then, of course, this, the final of the seven round, uh, two second, seven round picks, 244th overall was Luther Ellis's son here. And this kid was pretty good, man. You know, uh, I just think, you know, you look at a lot of these, the, the, some of these players that the Saints were able to bring in and um, you look at Ellis, you know, he was a guy that's pretty much, you know, uh, a guy they look at for his pass rush abilities, six three two forty. 240. Um, Four-year contributor at Idaho. He appeared in 47 games. He was a first-team All-Big Sky selection. Recorded 60 tackles and led the Vandals with 16 stops for loss and seven sacks. Added three pass defense, one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery. And, of course, I told you, Luther Ellis' son, uh, who was a two-time Pro Bowler in his time with Detroit. And, of course, he finished his career with 288 stops, 47 tackles for loss, 17 sacks, finishing 13th in Vamble history for stops and 5th in loss. So you look at some of these guys, this is not a flashy draft. This is like a blue-collar draft for the Saints, if you get what I'm saying. You know, we went over it in a previous show. The crew will make sure it's linked here if you haven't heard it when we broke all this down. But looking at these guys, man, you know, McCoy on down to Caden Ellis. This is a this is a blue collar class of guys that's gonna come in and make a, a contribution. I mean, for real, McCoy is definitely gonna start in my book. Alizé Mack could very well steal the third tight end position. Saquon Hampton, two of the safeties, he could very well be a reserve safety that can play with his experience. I think Chauncey Gardner Johnson is your third safety without a shadow of a doubt. Kate Nellis could even sneak up here because the Saints have a need for a backup defensive end. Uh, really, in my opinion, because you look behind Cam and Davenport, man, oh, my goodness, you know, it, it's a it's a drop. And then, you, of course, we was thinking about the fact the Saints were looking at Anza. You know, guess what Anza went to? He went to Seattle. He signed with Seattle, so we, lo- we lost out on Ziggy Anza. But, you know, I was kind of anticipating, hoping that the Saints would kind of reach back and say, you know what, we could use a veteran pass rusher to go with what we got. But they are really staking it out on Davenport that he's going to perform in a capacity form for this entire season. I hope so, man. I want to see what the guy got. But the only thing I've seen was flashes of potential and a lot of damn injuries. So, man, come on now. Let's just, you know, hope for the best here. And uh, they got a lot of guys that's going to come here and try to provide depth off of that. But anyway, let's look at the Saints open at minicamp on Friday. They had 48 players training out for the rookie man in camp in which big fullback Michael Burton is going to come in here and try to compete with the likes of our guy here, Zach Lyon. It's going to be interesting. Saints bringing in fullbacks to compete. They also bringing in Sylvester, big old defensive tackle Sylvester Williams. That's a huge sucker right there. Bringing him in, I'm really interested to see what will he do. Offensive lineman Sam Young, 
They also have a couple of players we told you about. Safety Ed Paris used to play for LSU. Kicker Cole Tracy, which is very interesting to bring in Cole Tracy, even though you just inked uh, Will Lutz to a monster contract, but you bring in a little competition with a Cole Tracy, who's one of the, who probably one of the best kickers in college history. So that'll be interesting. And of course, punter uh, Alex Kajelston and quarterbacks James Tabari and one from Southeastern Louisiana defensive back Max Lyons, among others. Now, there's some players from last year's Saints practice squad who who is going to be here and they will sign to the roster, still participating in the practices, including quarterback JT Barrett. They got defensive tackle Tamazi Luleli and offensive tackle Nate Wansniak, who some kind of way ended up on this roster def- despite the fact that uh, they released. You know, I ain't going to even go into that. I ain't going to talk about it. Y'all know what I'm hitting at. Y'all listen to the show. Y'all know I'm hitting at. But anyway, here's a, a full list of tryouts. I'm going to try to get them to you before the break. Offensive lineman Roman Andrus to, uh, from Utah State. No relation to our Andrus Pete. Uh, offensive lineman Fayeo Owalaja from North Northern Colorado. Wide receiver Brian Brown from R- Richmond. We, we mentioned uh, fullback Michael Burton. Wide receiver Dylan Colley from Hawaii. That guy, really interested in him. I remember him on pitches. Nice little slot guy. Uh, I don't know. Long shot there. Offensive lineman Ryan Cummings from Wyoming. Wide receiver Amber Etta Tao from Syracuse. Linebackers Frank Genda from San Jose State. And Nick Giorgio from Springfield. Safety Robbie Grimsley from North Dakota State. Very accomplished program in North Dakota State. Grimsley played a lot there. So we'll see what kind of game he'll bring. Defensive lineman Janio Grissom from Oklahoma. Offensive lineman Marcus Henry from Boise State. Offensive lineman Yorick John from Georgia State. Linebackers Jawan Johnson from TCU and Colton Jumper from Tennessee. Remember, Colton was here last year coming back to try to uh, try to make the team again, uh, try to get on the team. Offensive lineman Matt Kaufman from Tolson. Quarterback Kyle Kemp from Iowa State. Punter Alex Kajelston, we just mentioned him from Mick from McNeese State. Defensive lineman Austin Larkin from Purdue. Offensive lineman Julio Lozano from Liberty. Tight end David Lasario from UTEP. Defensive back Max Lyons from Southeastern Louisiana. Running back James Madison from Idaho State. Fullback Bradley May from Weber State. Defensive back Tavares McFadden from Florida State. Quarterback Marcus McMarion from Fresno State. Safety Reed Miller from Montana. Defensive back Dejan Neal from Shepard. Tight end Elias Neeson from North Northern Illinois, uh, Iowa. Running back AJ Ololet from Iowa from Ohio, which is very interesting. Led the nation in, in his conference and missed force of people to miss tackling him very elusive wide receiver francis owusu from stanford safety ed paris from lsu linebacker brandon payer from colorado state pueblo offensive lineman marcus profit from missouri state and we got a few more we're gonna get to so we're about to hit our break when we come back we're gonna finish up on these names i got interviews from cam jordan uh marcus davenport and some other news to hit you with with the saints you're listening to the number one independent Saints podcast in the land. We are the Sports Coma. We'll be back. and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Embrace Pet Insurance is more than just pet insurance. Embrace Pet Insurance promises to provide genuine support and certainty when your pet needs it the most. 
with personalized accident and illness policies, compassionate customer care, 24-7 access to veterinary professionals, flexible wellness plans, timely claims processing, and online customer portals. Their values is what makes them embrace. So when selecting a pet insurance company as a partner in your pet's care, you deserve a company that has your pet's best interests at heart. Get top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Up to 90% back on bills at any vet, total protection, pet insurance and wellness, and dependable claims payments. Get the top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Go to EmbracePetInsurance.com. That's EmbracePetInsurance.com. Check the link in the description section below. Are you a boxing fan? Check out Ring Kings Boxing only on the PRO Media Network. Sports fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear. From all the leagues, teams, and players you love, unique one-of-a-kind designs exclusively by Fanatics, and autographed collectibles from today's biggest stars shipped directly to your home. Join Fanatics Rewards for free to earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and for a limited time, get 20% off all orders. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Hit the link below and rep the black and gold today. Who that? Do you need a domain name? How about a host for your website that can work with WordPress? Try Namecheap.com. They make registering, hosting, and managing domain names for yourself or others easy and affordable because of the internet needs people. Namecheap is an ICANN accredited domain register and technology company founded in 2000. It's one of the fastest growing American companies according to the 2018 Inc. 5000. Celebrate nearly two decades of providing unparalleled levels of service, security, and support. Namecheap has been steadfast and customer satisfaction with over 10 million domains under management. Namecheap is among the top domain registers and web providers in the world. They offer a full selection of popular and unique domains along with fully featured hosting packages, SSL security certificates, who is guard privacy protections, and more, all at the lowest prices in the industry. So if you need a domain name or hosting or anything else, think Namecheap.com. That's right, Namecheap.com. Check the description section below for link. Follow the Sports Hub on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You're listening to the Sports Hub with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Podcast 358, we're coming at you, man. We just covered a lot of news and notes on the other side to break, man. This time around, we got more information for you. Saints family. It's, it's the start, man. This is the start of the start of the start. It don't just start the preseason, man. We got to get these guys together, man. Big time. Big ups. Big ups. Big ups to the Saints organization, man. They really getting focused, man. It's time to get to the Super Bowl, y'all. What y'all think about that, man? We've been right at the cusp of it lately. The Minnesota non-miracle, the, you know, the, the debacle in the dome, I call it. You know, we don't even have to get into that. But more news on the Saints, man. Them, the Saints announcing them to finish reading this list of all these guys that they're bringing in here. But to be kind of honest with you, me and the crew were talking about it. And, you know, it, it's this is really interesting, you know, for the Saints. A lot of depth all over the place. I'm just loving it, man. I'm loving the fact that the Saints are looking at positions like the wide receiver position of getting it. And, of course, we still can add people as it comes in, you know, lately. That's how we get some of these guys in here. Then later on, right before the season starts, and uh, a veteran might get released that we might look at seeing. Of course, we know about the news of Des uh, White, Des Bryant, excuse me, Des Bryant, as he is uh, getting healthy, making cuts and everything. And that could be a possibility because you never know what might happen in camp. An injury or two might ha- open up. And of course, you can see Des White. I mean, why I'm saying white, Brian, Des Bryant, excuse me, fam, Des Bryant joining the black and gold once again and take care of some unfinished business because that's what you got down here, Des. Unfinished business, baby. Come on. Um, Also, a little news to get back into before we get into our interviews on this side of the break. We got Cam Jordan uh, chiming in. We got Davenport chiming in. We got David Onyemata chiming in. Uh, we got the rest of the, these, these draft guys to get through. And we also want to give you some information, um, information about the Saints. 
uh, uh, announcing yesterday a signing of uh, nine of the undrafted guys who also they also announced the waiving of a rookie of rookie uh, actually running backs Mortez Carter who came over here last year from Grambling they waived him an undrafted rookie for agents Chase Hansen a linebacker and tight end Jake Powell out of mind mouth so those guys are released Martez Carter from Grambling he's gone Chase Hansen is gone Jake Powell is gone and three-year contracts were announced for defensive end Carl Granderson. And I just for whatever reason, the guy reminds me of Junior Gallette. And I'm not saying his, his behavior is off the field, although he has some stupidness that he did up there. But on the field, he got a kind of Junior Gallette swag to me. So keep an eye on Carl Granderson. But the Saints issued out three-year contracts to these players. Carl Granderson, offensive lineman Ethan Greenwich, linebacker Porter Galston, which the guy from USC was listed as defensive end. Saints really high on that man. I mean, he just had some a crap load of injuries that kind of happened to him. He has, remember I just mentioned Junior Gallette swag with Carl Grandison. Well, Porter Galston has a Haloi Kakaha swag to him. You see all kind of potential to guys making plays, but he's, you know, injuries has still his career. Hopefully he can rehab and get together here with the Saints. Running back Darnell Holland, is another guy, a little speedster, uh, change of pace back. The Saints were able to sn- sign him to a three-year deal. We knew LaJordan Humphreys, which is probably the biggest name of all of the undrafted guys that a lot of people really like, LaJordan Humphrey, thinking he's going to really step it up. And if this guy could be everything that we anticipate is, he could, that he should be, he should definitely make this team. No doubt about it. Tackle Derek Kelly the second, Lone Stapper, Nick Moore, and defensive tackles. Oh, actually, defensive tackle Shy Tuttle from Tennessee. Now, this guy's had all kind of accolades going into college. A lot of injuries in college kind of stilled his career, and he's trying to hopefully show the black and gold. He got a high motor. The guy's strong. Let's see what Shy Tuttle can do here. And of course, linebacker Darnell Darrell, excuse me, Darrell Williams, linebacker Darrell Williams. So that's the guys the Saints signed to three year contracts, and they released them other guys. So the Saints, the black and gold, trying to fill positions. They're looking for men and people that can really help out the team moving forward. So I'm just, 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 you know, I'm just hoping that the Saints, man, you know, don't, you know, they find some of these guys and don't release them. I didn't like the fact that we released our, our defensive backs we drafted last year. Then when it came down to it, you wish you would have had at least one of them because you had Ken Crawling running around there looking sorry. You know, so then you bring P.J. Williams back. You know, I, I, I fathom this, y'all. Think about this for a second. If we had kept those defensive backs we drafted in last year's draft, would we have wasted time bringing P.J. Williams back or Ken Crawley back, tending him an offer for $2 million? We'd have been able to save, what was that, $2 million for Crawley and two point five for P.J.? That's almost $5 million between two cornerbacks. And, you know, I don't think none of those guys are going to get any better than what they are right now. I'm just just being honest with you. But with the potential of those other guys, I mean, they already bearing fruit and one with the Giants, the other guy with the Texans. So, I mean, I just think that was a major mistake. Hopefully they don't do that stupid stuff this time around. Let's get to back into the rest of the list of our undrafted guys. Camp bodies. Kicker punter Austin Rocco from out of Idaho. Defensive back Chris Rafer from Mississippi State. Punters Brock Holler from Truman State. Defensive lineman Ezekiel Rose from West Virginia. Defensive back David Simmons Jr. from North Park. Offensive lineman Jordan Sims from Ole Miss. Quarterback James Talbury from McNeese State. Fullback Tank Tarrell from Northern Colorado. Tight end Colin Thompson from Temple. Cole Tracy. Defensive lineman Taney Tupu from Washington uh, defensive lineman Sylvester Williams, wide receiver Mika Wright from Maine, and offensive lineman Sam Young from Notre Dame. That's a list of the guys that the guys is attending the camps right now. And as it stands, that's all you know. That's pretty much all that's going on in the, with the camp participants. Now, of course, they have, like I said, most of the guys that's on the practice squad. All the guys on the practice squad, and most of the players like Nate Wisniak and and um, uh, JT Barrett, those guys are going to be tr- trying, you know, out there trying to make a play. The rest of those guys are basically trying to try out the field. The rest of the Saints 90 man roster going into the get ready for the big camp. Now, before we get into any or any more news, let's hear what Cam Jordan has to say about this. Upcoming that's season's embedded camp. Into the community like it is. You're going to be able to, to partake in events like this. 
is is there a little bit of team bonding that goes along with this? Because you know, if you group of guys away from the field a little bit, helping out the community, is, is there a little bit of chemistry that can be formed with this? Um, absolutely. Um, so especially you know you got you got a, a core big big guy uh, in the building, Mike T over there. Um, you got young Marcus Davenport, and uh, you know he's only been a part of the Saints for a year. And you already know that he, he's a part of the community. Um, Taylor Stallworth, David Onyemata, just buying in. Um, you talk about uh, guys that show up together. Um, when you have reliability like that, you can also know that you know there's always going to be a little bit of extra camaraderie there for you to talk about in the building. Marcus was just talking to us about you know some of the things you want to improve on from last year. How much can you help him you know see through to his potential? Um, I mean, he is a freakish talent uh, in terms of how athletically gifted he is, um, and it's just about you know that rapid growth that. We saw it during his rookie year, um, as long as he continues on that steady path of continuing to develop his mindset of how he's going to attack an a offensive lineman, there's no telling what he's going to do this season. I'm pretty excited about the growth from year one to year two, as I normally am. I'm not usually uh, looking forward to a person's first year, but give me their second year, give me their third year. As they continue to grow into a pro, that's where it gets exciting. Let me ask a couple other guys, but I mean, what is the vibe like in the building you know, after coming back after another devastating that. We're ready to work. Um, overly ready to get back into the building. I wish, you know, week one was upon us, but that's not the case. We've got, you know, we're in the first part of our, you know, the three-part process to get to get to uh, end season. You know, you got your you got your OTAs, you've got your in training or your training camp, then you've got your preseason training camp, and then of course you get to season. Um, and we're at the very beginning of these stages. Over, overly excited to be in the building. It's wonderful to be around the guys. It's wonderful to, you know, uh, be out there lifting, working out, running with our guys, um, seeing where everybody's at. And it's almost like nobody's dropped a step, really. Uh, it's more like you don't have anybody coming in overweight. You don't have anybody, you know, having to get on the right mindset. We're all in the same mentality. Is that how you feel right now? You feel Absolutely. Peak? I feel, I feel sort of optimal. I'm not even going to lie to you. Um, I, I'd like to say that um, I'm overly excited. Uh, to see what the D line can do. Of course, we're we're hurting. We're missing. Uh, we're missing Sheldon Rankins. Um, the absence of Marcus is going to devastate. You know, everybody in the back in the in the back of our minds. Um, but the ability for us to have uh, a young core group with you know forefront leaders: Alvin Kamara, Mike T, uh, Sheldon Rankins, David Onyemata. Um, we brought we brought in uh, Mario Edwards Jr. Um, he's overly excited to to learn whatever he can. Uh, we brought in Malcolm Brown uh, to take Tyler Davidson's place, I guess, because he went over to the red and black team. Still don't get that. Um, but for everything that you know, we have in our building, we're super excited to be back to work. We talked a lot last year before the season started about your snap counts. Last year, I think you got like a hundred fewer right? snaps. Um, is that good? And did you feel fresher at the end? Like, did that turn out to be a positive move? I have no idea. You don't know. Hey, I'm, I'm going to let analytics be analytics. I have no idea. I know that I want every snap that I'm able to play. Um, every possibility to take the field and, and put our team in a better position, I want to be a part of that. Uh, as far as the Saints go, you know, uh, it's always special to take a field with a, with a group of men that you've bled with, you've sweated with, and you care about. So you actually don't care about that number. That's more for the coaches yeah, to worry about? Yeah, I'll worry about I'll, I'll let the top brass worry about that. I know if I take the field, it's we've taken field with a purpose. And you never Cam Jordan, y'all. When he take the field, he taking the field with purpose, man. Love Cam, man. Don't y'all love Cam, man? That's the type of energy, man, your defensive leader has. Cam Jordan, bright, optimistic, always positive, ready, raring to 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 go and lead the team. And man, you know, it just goes to show you that the spirit of the teammate isn't broke because of the stupidness that had happened with the Minnesota Miracle and the debacle in the Dome last year with the Rams. You know, it's just good to hear from Cam. In a minute, we'll play Davenport, who he spoke about, called him a freak. Let's give a little information about some of the numbers for your favorite Saints players coming up. We got a little list here, uh, courtesy of the Saints Wire, uh, showing uh, the numbers for the upcoming players. Now, I'm going to give you a few of them. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is going to wear number 22. Jo- uh, tight end Jared Cook, he's going to stick with that 87. Tight end Alizé Mack is 86. Wide receiver Le Humphrey, uh, Le Jordan Humphrey is 84. Mario Edwards Jr. is 97. Kate Nellis is 55. Latavius Murray is 28. Hmm. Porter Galston is 58. Saquon Hampton is 33. Malcolm Brown is 90. Carl Granderson is 57. Old Ricky Jackson number. Daryl Williams, the linebacker, is number 50. 
Mike Herndon, offensive lineman, 66. I'm going to go with some of the more named guys. Punt returner, Marcus Shrell is 35. Azigbo is 32. Easton is wearing 62. Uh, Eric McCoy is 78. And uh, let's see, that's a handful of the ones that we have up to this point. Now, uh, they got a few of the undrafted guys here uh, uh, that uh, have them. But, uh, Kenny Bigelow. Uh, 76, Shy Tuttle, 74, Emmanuel Butler, the wide receiver, 17. The kick returner, Deontay Harris, who is going to be exciting, wearing number 11. And, uh, and I think that's pretty much some of the more named guys. So until we get a bigger list, we'll uh, play more. We'll get you, know, get you some more information. But anyway, let's get into Marcus Davenport's interview as Davenport talks about, uh, you know, what he expects, you know, about the team. And of course this, you know, the guys were attending, uh, they were working at a, I ain't going to say a fundraiser, more like a, a neighborhood event where they're helping people, uh, in the community, a community event that the Saints are known to do. And, you know, you just got to give guys credit like that when they can give, you know, these guys are millionaires, but any time it's important for you to kind of give back to the community and understand that and repay to the to the community that is picking you up, them guys really understand universal principles of giving and sharing the wealth and moving around. So, without me giving any more lectures, here's Marcus Davenport. His thoughts on um, what's coming up. Only with my dad. So yeah. You're talking about the draft boy last year after you got drafted. No, this one. They're gonna get boiled today. No, no, no. Um, the one I just did like a couple weeks ago. Oh, at like the Saints. Yeah. Okay, during the draft. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. During the draft. Um. And so you've never helped build a ramp before? Only for my dad's shed. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That's, that was much worse than I got. And how fulfilling is it to you know, come out here with your teammates and help for something like this? I think it's a great thing to be able to help and give back. And um, I think that's been our thing to try to do that more. Well, from a team bonding kind of deal, just kind of away from the, away from the uh, office a little bit, coming out here, helping out the – can it help the chemistry a little bit? It should, you know. I think, weirdly enough, we have a lot of team bonding. You know, I just saw these guys yesterday before that we went fishing. You know, the chemistry is there. So, what was your first NFL offseason like? Huh. Uh, I need to stop saying. Um, it was a, it was a grind. You know, uh, I believe, and I, I know my teammates believe there's really no time off. You know, we're still set on a goal that we didn't necessarily accomplish. So. And what what has the mood or vibe been like since y'all have been back? I mean, I know everyone's hungry, but I know I'm sure some people are still thinking about last year. I don't really think people are thinking about last year. I just know that they're ready for this year. So you know, everybody's been taking the right steps, and uh, that's just been the process. How different is it for you? I'm, I'm sure at this time, well, not at this time, but you know, the first four months of last year, you don't know where you're going to wind up, and you're working out for the draft. You don't know where you're going to get picked. Now, this year, you can actually sort of attack the off season in a different way, right? Yeah, last year, the the whole mindset was we got to prepare for these drills. You don't really prepare for football, so just being able to you know leave that behind and you know focus on my craft has been great for me. Did you do a lot of studying? Have you done that, like looking at every you know plays from this past season and what you could like what do you see when you look at what you did last year uh, honestly I see I didn't do enough I see a lot of little mistakes a lot of hesitation um missed opportunities so I yeah I've got to watch it you know over and over and over again and correct that and I've got to watch more film on other people too so and with uh, AO gone it would seem like you could have more opportunities how prepared are you you know to take on a bigger role um <laughs> so I think in a sense, you know, I'm prepared for what my coaches have for me, you know, and I'm trying to prepare like I'm going to play my best year ever. So that's really it. Why, he, why are you confident that you can? Why? Because we're putting in that work now. We've been putting in the work. You know, we've been in the film room, we've been in the weight room, building it differently. Is there anything you're trying to do differently with your game? I'm just trying to stop hesitating, you know. Um, be more confident in my pass rush and uh, play my own game. When you watch Cam. That's Marcus Davenport family talking about stop hesitating and just play his game, let it go. And uh, this guy's instinctive, man. Overthinking the game, that's something a rookie would do. 
you know, as opposed to just playing with your instincts. That's what most old ball coaches say. You're thinking too much. You're thinking too much. Just go get the quarterback. You know, and, and that's the thing that's part of that. You know, if you see something just going, it has to be a, you know, it's instinctive. But Cam Jordan, one of the supreme pass rushers in the league, he'll get Davenport over that hump, man. I mean, he got a, he has a person on the opposite side that he can learn from. But, you know, we, 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 we put a lot up to get Davenport last year. But, you know, I know, and the Saints could still address the defensive end position, but Davenport, man, he's coming in as a starter this year. We knew this would happen coming into the year, but I would also have thought that the Saints would have did something to kind of uh, bridge themselves there. There's no veteran pass rusher. Uh, uh, You can look at, I don't know if I would consider the guy we picked up from the Giants as a, you know what I'm saying, as a defensive end. He can play defensive, man. I imagine so. I guess that you you could, but I could see the Saints got him penciled in as a defensive tackle because there's a need there being that Sheldon Rankins isn't there. But I guess they could move, you know, people. They do have a lot of flexibility there. But ultimately, I was looking at them to at least, you know, perhaps bring in a veteran pass rusher that can actually, you know, kind of come in and do some things. You know what I mean? You know, perhaps, man. I'm just saying, you know, if we had a, I don't know, man, I don't know. I just think that the Saints should have done, you know, Ziggy Anza, what would have been a problem signing Ziggy Anza? I mean, it would have been a perfect compliment to have to a guy like Davenport. I mean, seriously, what would have been an issue having him? And then they ain't play in Seattle didn't play, pay a boatload of cash to get him. You know, it's, I'm just looking at it, man. In my mind, I'm saying, you know, if this is Super Bowl year, we need to keep as many, we need to have as many people in place as we possibly can to help us in the situation. That's my thinking on it. You know what I'm saying? That is my thinking. Because ultimately, we got Drew Brees on the time on the time clock, don't we? I mean, seriously, how long do we expect Drew to play here? So, I mean, you get Jared Cook for two years. You give him 15-something million dollars, correct? Of course, we bring in Mario Edwards Jr., who's not a pass rusher. You know, he's a tweener type of guy. He could play a uh, defensive tackle. He could play in in a spot for you, but you need an edge rusher. Mario Edwards is in there. Ziggy Anza would have been that guy. You know, he definitely would have been that guy. If you look at some of the career stats on um, Mario Edwards Jr., I don't know, man. You're looking at the sacks. The biggest amount of sacks that he had was three and a half sacks in 2017 for the Oakland Raiders. Three and a half sack, yeah. Pretty. Uh, outside of that, two years in which he had two sacks. In 2018 with the Giants, he had two sacks. Two sacks with the Raiders in 2015. You know, but he's not, he wasn't primarily used as a situational passer, but that's not his game. He's a tweener guy, a strong guy that could play either inside, outside, but more inside than outside, if you get my drift. You know, so I, I just think that the Saints, then, of course, you have other guys that's unproven, like Carl Grandison, they gave this contract to. And of course, you have Trey Hendrickson. I know about Trey Hendrickson, but Trey Hendrickson, I have I have zero confidence in Trey Hendrickson at this point. I'm just going to be honest with you, and most of y'all can concur with me because he hasn't shown you anything. I mean, over the last couple of years, what has he actually shown you to gain confidence in him? Diddly squat. You know why? Because he's hurt. He's always hurt. He get out there and he busts his butt. He gets hurt and he sit down. I mean, you cannot count on that kind of player until he can show you that he can do it i wouldn't i wouldn't bet on it i wouldn't do it so i don't know man i just think that the saints why not why couldn't they have picked up on ziggy anza why not why the heck not but anyway uh could y'all guys look up crew could y'all look up the contract on ziggy anza for me and see what perfect perfect Oh, we got much time, okay? Well, anyway, all I can say, man, is that right now as it stands, the Saints opening camp, they got a lot of youth and athleticism to mix with some of them good old veterans, and we're going to see what they can make good of it. Hopefully, 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 we can find a few diamonds in the rough that can ultimately help this team in a major capacity. That's what I'm hoping for. But anyway, that'll do it for the show today. Thank y'all for joining us here on the Sports Coma. As usual, if you like the show, do me a favor. Hit 
the subscribe button if you haven't already hit the subscribe button hit the notification button that way you can know when we go when we do our shows and a little information fam also we're getting ready man we're getting closer and closer about another two weeks and we're going to be doing our live video shows on the weekend covering the new orleans saints so just to let y'all know man we appreciate the support sean the rest of you guys thank you guys man we almost there Cody. from the crew here at the sports coma the number one independent saints podcast on land thank y'all for listening peace hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours. If you are benefiting positively from our content, please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the Promedia Network. That's www.patreon.com slash the Promedia Network and support the true independent artists. Are you a Pelicans fan? Check out the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. The Klein's family has been getting people to go nuts for old nuts since 1995. As legends have it, a number of the Klein's friends who heard the idea said you can go nuts trying to name a store like that. In the excitement, the Klein's thought their friends said old nuts instead of go nuts and proceeded to throw caution to the wind. Old nuts has over 2,000 items bulk and wholesale prices of a whole lot of your favorite fruits nuts and confessions a selection of gift baskets for any budget any occasion and provides one of the best and impressively rated shopping experiences on the web fact is between their selection service speed or their online presence in the virtual mirror retail experience they have developed an enviable client base that's comprised of personal and professional customers who count on their remarkable range of gift baskets think of gift basket think about old nuts check them out oldnuts.com check the link in the description section below frog.com for all of your electronic gadget needs fast becoming number one online seller cell phone and accessories consumer electronics automobiles and motorcycles home and garden items 5d diamond painting crafts electrical and tool supplies computer and networking supplies lights and lighting supplies sports and travel items toys and hobby supplies apparel and accessory mother and kid items health and beauty items and much much more newfrog.com has up to 70 percent off on some products and you can check out their weekly promotions for all the best deals. Remember, when thinking online electronics and gadgets, think NewFrog, newfrog.com. Check the link in the description section below.